What is going on guys? Monk7 Mad here today with a brand new tutorial showing you how to make your very own 2D clean banner for YouTube. Now this video is going to be trying out a different tutorial style, hopefully to make things more to the point, a little bit more efficient. However, uh, this is just a trial, so if you could let me know in the comment section below whether you do prefer this style or my original, that would be extremely handy. For those that do, there might even be a small giveaway prize. Um, but I'll select that randomly from the comments and uh, I'll elaborate a bit more on that later on. So, without further ado, how to make your own clean 2D banner. Stage 1. So, first of all, you've got your template tutorial background from the description, uh, or your own. And what we're going to do is choose an appropriate background. Now, the background colours are quite important and you need to choose them really well to make your whole piece and feel of the page very, very clear and definitive. So what I've done to help this process along is I've chosen some suited colours and I've put them in the colours folder. So feel free to check out five tested colours that work really nicely and five gradiented colours. You can also save the gradients if you open up the gradients uh, colouring by clicking on them, going to the effects and clicking new. For the purpose of this video I'm going to choose this blue as my background colour. Okay, so we've got the blue background there, and that's very nice. The next stage I tend to do is try to give it a bit more light. So to do that, it's one new layer with a paintbrush, 1300 pixels soft, opacity of 50, and very simply, on the new layer, put a dot in the middle. Then change the blend mode to overlay. Stage two. So once you've chosen your background colour, it's a good idea to make sure that you choose an appropriate font. Now when working with a clean banner, it's always a good idea to have a clean font that's very, very simple. To help you along, I've also decided to add in some font examples. So three of these will be pre-installed on your PC, that's Arial, Myrad and Sego. The two that aren't, Typograph and Sensation, as examples, are also available for download in the description. You can look for other fonts, but I do advise that you look at ones that have particularly got a font family. So MyRed Pro has quite a large font family, which is why it's one of my favourites. So once you've chosen your font, it's always a good idea to start off by adding the channel name. Now, it's very important to actually work with the font family which I mentioned before. So what you need to do is actually create a sort of hierarchy. So the hierarchy starts off with the most important information at the top. So this is your channel name. So this needs to be the most bold and most brightest of all the pieces. Then is the middle stage, which is sort of your subtitles or slogan or both. So that could be um, links to, well not links, but titles of places or things that you have. So it could be uh, like check out my portfolio or check out my Facebook page or something like that. And then at the bottom of the hierarchy we need the thinnest font, perhaps the duller of the colour. And that's where you put the specific details such as maybe the actual link, the URL of this subtitle. So it's got to go down in stages and it's a good way of making the audience know what's important information and what is really what you want them to look at. It's a case of directing the user's attention. So I've started off and I've got bold channel name here from Myrad Pro and a good example I'm going to try and demonstrate of actual good use of text is I've changed the font from bold to regular and I've changed the font size down. And now if I type in something like your slogan, slogan, your slogan goes here. If I was to put this next to the channel name, there's a very distinct difference between the two. Quite a lot of contrast in both size of not only the weight of the actual font, but also the size as in the actual um, dimensions of the font. So when you look at this, the first thing you tend to look at is the channel name because one, it's bigger and two, it's seemingly brighter. And this is again exactly what I want. I want the user to see the channel name above the slogan. I want that to be the centre of the attention. I want people to know that my name is dot dot dot. And one thing that you then need to focus on once you've done that is just repeating this process to additional links, etc. so that you can direct the user's attention. 
So a good example would be, as I said before, with the sub uh, sort of subtitles, well, not subtitles, but a subtitle is say the link of your portfolio so if I actually just put this on here the store is, a, is an example I've done so it could be check out my store and this is the regular font as well so this is a regular font family and then the font I've got beneath is the light version so it's again going down so we've got the channel name as the biggest font and the most bold then we've got the slogan and the subtitles as regular and then we've got the very fine details as the light and it's a case of now the user knows the channel name is important they can see a slogan and they can also see a small link to the store and if they really wanted to see it it's in very small it's probably quite too difficult to see it at the moment but with some tweaks and some lighting adjustment etc it'll look great so that's just going to be repeated throughout now should you have a slogan that doesn't meet the same length as your channel name don't, don't, ever, 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 please, if a professional attempt to trying to make a background, do not do this. Okay, this is horrible. This is when you've tried to stretch the size of the font manually across. It really, really does not look professional, and it really can make a big difference if you're expecting people to put your design skills above others, or, for example, just a general team professionalism. If people want something sleek and professional, if they see that, they're not going to think as clearly. What it might be a good idea to do is to create it more like this. <clears throat> it's subtle, it's sleek, and it's not distorted. And the way to do this is simply go to the window, go to character, and in here you can see an option called VA. By default, it should be at zero. But if you had to change the number to a positive value, then it splits the letters apart, it's further distance between each letter, which is what I've done here. And the negatives bring the letters closer together if you want to do the reverse effect. Maybe your slogan is too long for your channel name, although logic would dictate more that you would just make the font smaller. But these are really good um, ways to distribute text better. You can also type in your own manu manual value, so you can have it's 500, 1000, whatever, instead of just the default setup presets, which are maximum 200. So once you've done that, you've now got your channel name, your slogan, and this. It's probably worth filling in the other details. So I've done this very quickly uh, to save some time. So once you've changed that, it might be worth looking at the next stage, which is perhaps adding more color or textures. Stage three. Say you've made all your text and you just want to add in that little bit more to the background. Something like a texture is always a good way to do this. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to use two textures. One of them is this one, and the other one is this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag them into Photoshop and just display them. So at the moment, it just overtakes the whole page. If your texture is not long enough and it is only part, what you might need to do is duplicate it and merge the images together. Try using an eraser to soften the edge between so it looks more like seamless. Once you've done that, it's a case of dragging this below your text, making sure it's just above the original background defaults. So now that we've done that, it might be worth experimenting with the blend mode. So if I turn off the first one and just have the blue, maybe that's nice enough for you. Maybe you might want to just contrast it with what we already had. So if I just change this to soft light through the blend mode, it's a lot more of a subtle change. Again, you could experiment on your own accord, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to use soft light. A simple and subtle change to the document. If you wanted, you could leave it right there. If you wanted to add anything more, such as beams across, you can do. And I'll go into that in a moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this second texture. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to change the blend mode down to luminosity. And what this does is it takes the main color from one uh, the light sources and it just tries to distribute it over what's already there so instead of it focusing on the color it focuses on the actual brightness and intensity of each section once you've done that try tweaking with it change the dimensions angle it display it how you like make it so that it's not being too obstructive of the text now that we've done that you might think to yourself, well, the text, although it stands out, might not have 
enough focus. So you might want to add a few more details. So what could you do? Well, one thing that you can do is go back to your text, go into the text objects and add a shadow or a stroke. And by doing so, you're just providing a very simple, subtle way to just put a contrast between the text object and the background. You can experiment with the values and I tend to say around 30% opacity, mix around with the distance and the size and the spread of it, but you can actually very cleverly and very lightly make the contrast stick out. So to save some time, I have already done this, so I'm gonna just add in with the shadows. And it's only very, very subtle. I'm talking very subtle. And that's just so that one, it's sleek, and two, it does its purpose. And by doing so, now we've got quite, again, a distinct set of data that comes forward from the background, which is good, because now the text is fully visible, it's a little bit more unique, there's a lot more sort of brightness and contrast in it, which adds a bit more user sort of focus. And it also then allows us to really have just a very clean background. There's not too much information, there's not too much textures, it's just very simple and very, very clean. And that's exactly what you want from a professional banner, something clean. So once you've done that, maybe you might want to make some final adjustments. So what can you do? Stage four. So for the final adjustments, you might just simply want to add in something like a beam or a bar. And to do this, you might just go to your shapes and you might try and just drag a simple box across. This is a good way, one, to take up space of what's known as empty white space, although in this case, it's just empty space. And it can also just home in a little bit more focus towards the text. It's almost like it narrows down the focus area. Also, blur works really well for this purpose. Now, I've actually pre-made some beams, and this just selects a few different types, which I've tried out, which I also think are quite nice and acceptable. So the first one is a cross, and that is very simply two straight lines across the page. Again, as I said before, it just sort of narrows in the focus. Again, another very simple change, something very, very, very plain, but it does its purpose. It hits that functionality that it needs. Of course, you might want to level these up a little bit and just sort of move them up to their suited location. And then voila. Should you want to try something different, maybe you might want to alternate. So you might want to do a line, maybe extend it out, dip it out a bit, make it seemingly different, add a bit more depth to it. Again, you can experiment and try out what you like. But again, by bringing it in a point to the center here, your eyes automatically again drawn to the middle section, which has the channel name, the slogan, and a particular bit of information. So again, we're hitting that sweet spot. Then we've got things like the single beam. This is quite a common thing that's happened in the past. But should you want to add in things like social networking that you don't have in the bottom or on the sides, or you just want to add in perhaps a sponsor or anything like that, feel free to use a single beam. I always think that it's a good idea to have it on a very low opacity, um, quite a low fill, since you don't want it to be overpowering the rest of the document. And it just, it can sort of unify certain parts of the image as well. Not my personal preference, but it is quite common. And then finally, what you can do is if you wanted, you could combine two of these. So a single line across the bottom, just to sort of cut the page off where it is, and then use one of these sort of pop out boxes across the top, just to push that focus into the center. Now, that is more or less it. You can go and add additional bits and pieces if you'd like, but for the purpose of a simple clean tutorial I think this pretty much covers it. Make sure that all of your stuff is within the YouTube boundary areas and from there you can just simply save it by going file, save for web. You can also sharpen if you want but that's uh, 
that's not always necessary with text. Save, put it on the desktop as your piece. Then you can upload it and you're done. So now that we've finished the piece, I just wanted to show you what it looked like on the channel. I also wanted to thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully the new tutorial style is okay. If not, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget all the resources are in the description. Head over to any of the links that I've got on the pages. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy. And as always, take care.